Jemima Kirk, what do you miss most about girls? Uh, well, I miss, uh, I miss sort of uh, going to work, period. No, I mean, I miss going to work on, on uh, with, uh, with a group of people. I miss that sort of like atmosphere and camaraderie and just sort of showing up in the morning and everyone's like, got the same sort of the same goal in mind and there's just something nice and nice about that especially when you're an artist who works alone mostly um being on a set is um is a, a very different experience and it's something that i miss yeah mm. what I, mean, the only thing. I mean i also miss um i miss reading getting the new strips you know and reading what's what's coming up you know getting excited for yeah for this new storylines um, and um, yeah. Yeah, now you think about it. Now I, you ask me, I, I miss a lot, yeah. What was the last scene you shot? The very last scene I shot was in uh, episode nine of the last season. Um, and um, it was, <laughs> it was the part well, it's a. It was just a sort of montage clip, a clip from the montage of all the girls, just of Lena looking at all the girls, seeing like, you know, just sort of like, you know, staring at us with like with love, and I'm just sitting there eating cupcakes, and then I, there was it was a glimpse of me, but I will say a lot of effort went into it. <laughs> How many cupcakes did you have to eat? So many, and so many poor like extras they kept adding in because they're like you know what we need let's let jessa needs friends that's what jessa's sort of swan song is is that she's in the show is that she has she we're gonna make it sure that jessa has like a nice uh sort of friend support so we start throwing in like all these extras that she's chatting to and i knew there was going to be no audio so i was saying whatever which is always really fun to do yeah. Talking about how like you should be my friend because I'll totally steal your boyfriend, and um, you know, are you gay? Because I don't really know how to have female friends without sleeping with them. And whatever it was, so and then and then they take the audio off and they put all the heartwarming music over it, and that's what you get. <laughs> how, uh, how, how like compare the feeling to when they yelled "cut" on that scene, and it was your last bit of girls to how it felt when they said "action" six years ago on your first scene. Oh, that is so weird to think about. Uh, uh, okay, well, the first, when they first said action, I was so, so unsure of what I was doing and um, sort of bewildered and I just, I was just sort of like free falling that day. I couldn't believe really what was going on. And I don't think I had a grasp on sort of the magnitude of, the thing I was involved in. So they say, but also back then, six years ago, I was also, um, had a very different attitude to the way I approached acting. So I was also um, much more improvised then. And I still do that, but you know, now only when I'm asked to. <laughs> um, and, uh, so that action, I who knows what I did when they first said action to me, but I'm sure it was not written. Um, and then last day, when they say cut the last day, I was a bit overwhelmed because I, I'm terrible with like salutations and goodbyes. You know, I get very awkward and I'm like, shit, now they're gonna make an announcement and the whole thing. And I was like, just get me to my room, get me to my, get me to my dressing room. <laughs> I'm just not good at that stuff. You just like to slip away. You don't like the bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like to slip away. And then, um, but I didn't. I wasn't, they wouldn't let me. They had to be a big, a yeah. big uh, send off. Yeah, mm. it was nice. Yeah. And that was nice in episode nine um, that you were all at the party together because Girls, in some ways, has been a show about sort of four girls, but you've always had your separate shows. It's not like, friends where you're all sitting in a coffee shop every week all together. It's sort of four separate shows that intertwine at various points. 
Uh, what yeah. was it like? What's it like when you have those scenes where all four of you are together again? Uh, well, we always note, note it, and we always say, "Look, we're all together." Can you believe it? It's called girls, but we're never, never actually together. Um, but uh, oh, sorry, hold on, something's coming up on my. Um, it's always nice to see everyone at the same time. I mean, it's it's definitely different because what happens on that show very often is if you're not, you know, shooting something by yourself, you are sort of shooting with one other person uh, from the show. So, you know, your storyline, I had a storyline with Alison Williams and then she, you guys sort of bond over those few weeks that you're shooting and it just becomes like, you know, suddenly she's your, she's now your best friend. They're on, all on rotation, you know, mm. and then I've had weeks where, where Zasha's my best friend and Lena, well, Lena, yeah, Lena's a constant because Lena's always around yeah. because Lena's Lena. Um, but, but yeah, you sort of develop this like, um, uh, trauma bond. <laughs> <laughs> Who do you wish you'd one other actor? Yeah. yeah. Who do you wish you'd had more scenes with? Uh, uh, Elijah. Hmm. We had one and uh, that one where it was just us that I uh, I think got cut. I've had brief uh, brief moments with him where it's other people in the room. But oh, I guess you know we did do the um, the one with Sasha in this last season. That was fun. But yes, I would have liked more uh, substantial conversations with him that yeah. weren't necessarily banter, although the banter with him is so fun. Mm. Yeah. What do you think about, uh, how, how has Jessa, how did Jessa grow from season one to season six? Like what journey do you think her character took? Um, well, I would say that we started out with, uh, with Je when we met Jessa, she was at a very um, guarded place, you know, and and very um, very defensive, very guarded. And I won't say don't mean defensive like she was aggressive. I just think she was not she wasn't it wasn't able to be intimate with anyone, friend or romance or anything. That was just not something that she allowed. And I think as the as the um, as the series went on you know, we got to see how, that, that she, how you, she learned how to connect with people mm. or learn that, or sort of gave herself permission to, or saw that she is going to have to in order to be happy because we're seeing that her way of going through life of just being this sort of like in costume all the time, you know, and just being this performer mm. and um, always being sort of so superficial really she doesn't really listen and she doesn't really but she didn't in the in the beginning um that it doesn't make her happy mm. yeah yeah uh what do, i feel like uh jester in some ways was always very about the experience like i want to go and do this now let's go do it and what do you think like experiences she was sort of maybe not chasing but wanting more at the end of season six that maybe she wasn't that interested in early on in the show's run? I think the experience that she wanted now, and I don't think it was conscious, it, it, I, I think she, mm. I don't think, it, yes, perhaps she wanted experiences before, but they were always so conscious and so sort of inauthentic because, I mean, they were authentic to her brand, you know, but they weren't necessarily, but if you have to make a conscious effort to have an experience you're not really having an experience so i think the uh towards the end she um she was having a an experience that she did not plan on or necessarily want but one that she fell into quite authentically and, and i think she's sort of yeah i would say she's she's dropped that whole experience thing it's funny that you say she has that because I think I've always thought Hannah is having that, but mm. I think Hannah can be a composite of all the girls sometimes. So mm. I, I reminded the line that Jessa said when she said she wants to look um, 50 when she's 30. Mm -hmm. like, yeah. That's, yeah. Uh, what, what do you have a, do you have a favorite Jessa moment? 
Um, my favorite jazz from I, I mean, I loved. I loved all the stuff I get to do with Zasha. Um, I love the sort of what uh, what Zasha brings out in in me for Jessa, which is it's always very endearing and it's always this sort of you can sort of sense what they were like as kids, and um, it's a very light side of Jessa when they're around her when they're, and, and when when she's around her cousin. And um, and also she's the one I, I start, uh, Zasha's the one I started uh, shooting with, I think. She was my first big scene was with her. So, and for some reason it comes very naturally, improv with her is so easy. Um, uh, and um, I also love the stuff in episode nine, I liked. The last episode, the last yeah. episode that I was in. Yeah. So the last episode. Mm. Yes, <laughs> yes. The um, what? The last. The last episode. <laughs> what, yeah. What it, so you got that um like the favorite um that was your favorite sort of moment uh the Jessa. What do you think her worst decision was in six years? Hmm. Uh, I don't think of that worst decision. I'm trying to now. I'm trying to go through all the bad ones of what I don't know that there was a one that was the worst. I don't think any of them. I don't think any of them had more collateral damage than any of the others, except the Adam one. But that one turned out to be an important one for her that mm. happened to have a lot. The worst did the most damage, but she can't regret that one because it was her first real. Um, romantic relationship yeah so maybe question. like her worst decision and her best decision may have been yeah. the same decision yeah, yeah. how did you how do you feel about that adam's storyline like when you first like read it or were told about it did you think oh boy this is such an exciting direction or you're like oh this is a bit weird what did you think i was totally excited um because Anytime I did get to act with Adam, I, it was always so, um, it was always fun and I always wanted more. It would be kind of like if someone told me that I would get to work with Andrew for a whole season, I'd be like, oh my God, this is going to be heaven. Um, and uh, so I was excited about that. But then, and then reading the scripts, I started to, I got, I was concerned, you know, that I, how I was going to be able to play this because I didn't fully understand her doing this. Um, but that would be, that's because when any actor reads the first, when they read a script, the first sort of pass that they go in, like the first read that they have is through their brain personally, like how they would see things. Yeah. And um, that is obviously not <laughs> the one we're looking at. Um, and so it took me a little bit of time to understand her and why she would do it. But uh, and talking to Lena about it and Jenny, um, but I got it. But it was definitely a challenge. How are you most like Jessa? How are you most different to Jessa? Well, we look exactly the same. Yeah, um, we're identical. Dead ringer. Dead ringer. Uh, but uh, how am I most like her? Bum, bum, bum. Well, ah. Uh, I would say that I do, oh, God, I don't want to tell you too much without giving myself away, <laughs> giving away my deepest, darkest <laughs> secrets. Okay, well, not the, behaviorally, I wouldn't say I am like her, but I do have this, um, uh, I think that there's a thing that most most people at my age know how to do, which is to sort of uh, uh, be vulnerable you know, to someone who's sitting in front of them. And that's something that I've always still working on and something that acting has obviously helped me with. And then, but um, I think that's something that's difficult for Jessa. Mm -hmm. And then most unlike her, she has a lot of opinions on things she doesn't really, no, you know what? No, 
she has a lot of opinions on things that actually she does know about. And that's why I'm not like her, is it seems like she is curious about many different, she's got her thing is in all different pots that she's curious about. And she just wants to hear, read like a paragraph about, you know, something, you know, the, something about Queen Elizabeth's childhood and suddenly she's, you know, that's what she knows about today. You know, she's just curious perhaps more curious than me. And it's very childlike for her and, and I admire that. Mm. Uh, what, do, you have a, do you have a favorite like sort of onset moment from this, from your time on the show? Um, well, my birthday always crosses with the show. So oh, nice. yeah, so, so I love when people are all singing happy birthday to me and crowding around me and giving me cake. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's good. Uh, we're, uh, we're hoping in the next week um, to be talking with Alison Williams and Andrew Reynolds. Do you have any questions to ask them? Uh, not, uh, not ones that I would share publicly, but um, they're all very private, extremely private questions. Um, extremely be, personal. Oh, they'd be great. Um, they'd okay, be ask, uh, ask Andrew if he would like, if he wished he could work with me. <laughs> yes, I'll say yes. I'll, I'll ask him that. I'll go, did he if wish he had more sex no, no, no. Here's the best way to do it. Ask him who he'd really like to work with on a show that he didn't get to work with that much. And then, like, um, if he doesn't say you, should I say what about Jemima? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and then we'll figure out a way on this hangout thing that I can be called in, but he doesn't know that I'm there. Yeah. Well, and then could... suddenly they'll pop, you'll pop me up and be, I'll be like, hey! Yeah, that would be you? great. That would be yeah. fun. Well, we'll definitely let you know what he says. Um, <laughs> and we... Alison, yeah. um, I, I don't know what, I, what I would say is do not ask her okay. what, uh, what it's like for her father to watch the show. <laughs> Cause I know that's a question. She's a, she has a, a, a sort of uh, been asked many, 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 many times and she has some token answer she gives, but I'm sure it annoys her. <laughs> okay. So don't ask her that. Don't ask her that. I mean, she's not going to like get, get angry, but you'll see suddenly you'll just see a glaze yeah. over the eyes and she'll just be like, so have some, my dad supports me. <laughs> maybe, maybe, I, maybe I should pick another family member. Yeah, that's funny. One that she oh, does. Oh, Ricky. Ask about Ricky. Yeah. Ricky's her husband. Oh, nice. I'll ask her <laughs> about that because she's, she gets asked about Brian all the time. I'll I ask about someone else. Yeah, ask about Ricky or her dog Moxie. There, there. If you want to, if, if you want to get a really, um, into into the interview. Ask uh, yeah, maybe dog. Yeah, people love talking about their dogs too. That'll be that'll be nice. I like that's always yeah. interesting. Well, um, finally, uh, finally, um, Jemima, what legacy do you think um girls will leave behind, and what do you think sort of maybe ultimately Lena's accomplishment with the show was? Well, I I hope that that girls just becomes you know another sort of brick in the building of the, these uh these show, these these tv shows about women that are breaking down you know uh the boundaries for what we can show on tv and how we can portray women because we're not the first to do it we're just another another one mm -hmm. but we are another level and i, I think and I think one day our show will be, hopefully, will be dated, you know? And they'll say, oh, back then you couldn't do that on TV. You know, you, uh, you know and everyone's like, what? You know, we'll be like, um, sorry, my son just came in. No, it's totally um, fine. Um, ah, hi, buddy. Um, so yeah, so I hope that we are just uh, a stepping stone towards more. And um, yeah, that's all. I mean, I want to. I, I mean, I don't want to get too. I don't want to be too big for my boots or whatever. But you know, that girl and um, Golden Girls and the Mary Tyler Moore Show and 
all these TV shows that there, there was always one that was doing that was doing something quite brave for women in the media. And I hope the girls becomes one of them in the history books. You know? Like a like a time capsule of this moment in time. Uh, yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Women's control. Yeah. This change. Yes. This was a turning point, and it was. Um, mm -hmm. You know, and I, I think girls came about at a really interesting time. It, it came out amazing timing, actually, when this, when um, the sort of uh, uh, the conversation around like social politics and and women was really changing, and um, so that's how that's how I um, explain it being such a target for people's anger as well, mm. because it's a heated topic at the moment, and it was it was. And that's what how it got. That's why it was so popular, and that's why people, you know, were so critical of it as well. Mm. Well, thank you so much for chatting with us today, Jemima. Um, uh, lovely to meet your son as well. Um, you say hi. Hello. No. No. Um, <laughs> that's all right. Um, all the best for the Emmys, and all the best for what's next for you. And uh, yeah, it's lovely chatting. And uh, we'll, we'll send you that link to the uh, uh, Andrew Reynolds chat. Thank you so much. No worries. Okay. Bye. Bye. Go for okay. welcome. Uh -huh.